Obviously, the recipient would benefit from getting the money, but from a tax standpoint, they'd have to pay taxes on it. So they would like to get the money and not have to pay taxes on it. Now, after the cutoff date of uh, December 31st, 2018, they removed that rule so that the recipient wouldn't have to include it in income, whether alimony or child support, and the payer doesn't get the benefit of taking the deduction for alimony or child support uh, uh, for after the cutoff date, which you might think would be non-advantageous for the payer. It's not fair to the payer, but again, my argument would be, well, obviously if you change the tax code and everybody knew what the tax code was, I think the agreement would be different before, obviously, because you would say, well, there's tax consequences. We're going to take those into account and that's going to adjust the amount of payments that are going to go from one to the other. And then if there's a divorce agreement that happened after the cutoff date, as long as it's not retroactively changing what happened before to the agreements that happened before, it makes sense that you would just change the divorce agreement. An agreement. And it should be more easily to do that uh, without with the taxes, just get out of the way taxes, just stay out of it, just stay out of it, okay? IRS, just stay out of it for crying out loud. I think that makes more sense actually. But so let's if so let's say let's imagine we had an agreement before the date, and we're gonna say so this is the alimony, the recipient name. I'm just gonna say just just whatever. I'll just say t recipient's last name, Anderson, recipient's social security number which we have to give the IRS to because they have to show it, get the income on their side. Let's say it was, let's say it was 15,000 or whatever. And the date we're gonna say is on 010117 before the cutoff date of December 31st, 2018. I'm gonna say, okay, roll on over, roll it on over and there it is. So now we've got this deduction. We paid the alimony. It was agreed upon before you changed the law. And therefore I, this person gets to deduct Mr. Anderson the 15,000. So the 15,000 is going to roll down to the bottom here. And then on the 1040, we're going to have the 100,000, the 15,000 deducted to get to the adjusted gross income, the AGI, the 85,000, 12,950, still the standard deduction, getting us down to the 7,250. On the recipient side, as we saw on the income presentation and section, they would have to include the alimony received in that situation there has to be that symmetry if someone gets the deduction someone else has to have the income is the general rule you would think let's just put that into our excel worksheet over here because because why not so we're going to say this is an adjustment to income and let's add i'll just add a line item for alimony alimony that's not spelled right there's no way there is no way that you spelled well, I did. Is that really it? Did I do it right? Maybe I, I still can't believe it. You're too stupid to be able to spell alimony. No, it's right. What are you talking about? I know what I'm talking about. Okay. So then we're going to say this is going to be, this is going to be this one. And let's just put it on the outside. Assuming we only have one alimony payment. We're not paying multiple people alimony. Uh, in our worksheet, although you could set a worksheet with have multiple alimonies. I'm sure that comes up. Uh, so we'll say 15,000 and then we'll sum that up and that'll pull into the page one of the form 1040. So we've got the 100,000 minus the 15,000 gets us to the 85,000, 12,950 and the standard deduction gets us down to the 72,050. And so if I pull that on over that mirror, this is what we have here, 72,050, page two, calculation of the tax, 11,474, 11,474, 11,474, and that gets us down 15,000 withheld to the 3,526, 3,526, there we go. So that's just an example of the alimony bottom line. It was more difficult before the cutoff date. If you haven't, if you have an agreement that happened before the cutoff date, you'll probably be able to see it from prior year tax returns. And you can just copy the same kind of process going forward. And if the divorce agreement happened after that time period and people ask you about child support versus alimony, and what am I going to do? What are the tax consequences? I think they're trying to pull one over on me with this complicated tax stuff. Hopefully it'll be an easier situation. You could say, and, and you can help them out to, to say it's actually the tax 
the taxes are staying out of it. It should be easier, hopefully, uh, going forward. But we, we never know what the tax code could change suddenly. You never know. But that's how it is now.